Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this Family Bible Study Hour. Book of Acts. What is Acts about? It tells us how to react and act in the church, how to build a church, how to be successful. As God would lead us, as he sent forth the apostles, the sent ones, to teach his word. And, and why, why do you teach his word? To improve life. Give life meaning. Make life uh, interesting and important and happy, joyous even, in serving him. Now, we in the last chapter, chapter 7, Stephen gave one of the best Bible studies you'll ever read in summarizing God's plan in that 7th chapter of Acts. And they stoned him to death. And here, one's holding the coats of those that stoned him to death is none other than Saul, who we're going to change his name to Paul, and he'll write most of the New Testament. Paul was kind of a bad hombre because he was as zealous when he thought Christianity was false teaching as he was to push Christianity after he observed that it found it was real. So he was just a zealous type guy. He did, Paul didn't do anything halfway. It was all or nothing at all. So you can give Paul credit for that. But some of the things he did, he never quite got over them. He always, uh, he mentions them several times in the rest of the New Testament about how really awful he was toward the church. So, having said that, chapter 8, verse 1, let's go with it. Verse 1 reads, And Saul, this would be Paul before his name's changed, was consenting unto his death. That's to say, Stephen. And at that time, there was a great uh, persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. They stayed hooked, and the others, they kind of scattered, had to, to save their lives. Okay. Verse 2, and devout men, that's to say uh, pious, people really uh, sold into the Lord's message, carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. I mean, he, he was a pistol. By that I mean he got it done. The Holy Spirit was so strong in him. There were healings and miracles. And now he's gone. But boy, what a message he delivered on the way out. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. He laid it waste, in other words. Entering into every house and hailing or hauling, this is surd in the Greek, and it means drug them, right? by the hair even, if you would. Men and women committed them to prison. Um, you know, when you just bust into somebody's own home and do this, just because they're Christians, that's bad. But Paul thought he was doing what was right. He thought they were false teachers. That's the way Paul was. Again, he never did anything halfway. And... Um, Verse 4, therefore they that were scattered abroad, that's to say the believers, went everywhere where preaching the word. What word? The word of Jesus Christ. The word that makes a difference. The word that God sent through that son. That son that was the living word with us in the flesh. Verse 5, and then Philip went down to the city of Samaria Philip being one of the seven that was chosen along with Stephen in the beginning of chapter 7 and preached Christ unto them. Philip did this. Um, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. He did. Now, our Heavenly Father gives you a little pop test every once in a while and you want to be sharp enough to catch it. Philip did these miracles only with the aid of the Holy Spirit. God expects you just to uh, uh, um, know that of a certainty. It wasn't Philip necessarily that was doing it. It was the Holy Spirit accomplishing it. You can do nothing, but the Holy Spirit can perform miracles through you. 
what I'm saying is always give God the credit if you want to be blessed or, hey, suffer. It's up to you. You can do without if you like. But don't ever forget to say, well, I want to do what Philip did. Well, then get very well acquainted with the Holy Spirit so he'll work through you also. But be sure and give him the credit. Verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices, they were screaming, came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsy. Let's say they, they were paralyzed and that were lame were healed. And Philip could accomplish this. You know, Philip would settle in the area of what we call the Gaza Strip today. You know, and and uh, he would be right in the land, if you would, that was um, occupied, uh, was supposed to be given to Judah, but Judah never possessed it. Philip not only occupied Ashdod and a few of the other places, the, the, um, uh, that particular area, but he raised four daughters, and they were all prophetist. They all prophesied. So, you know, a lot of people don't like to think that women do God's work. Well, all he had was four daughters. And boy, could they teach. Could they prophesy. And they did prophesy. Right in an area where Philip would take them. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was working in that whole family. And, and so it is. You can, you can read of that, those four daughters... And I believe it's the 21st chapter of this great book of Acts. We'll get there. Okay. Now continuing in verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. S true joy is serving Christ. You're not going to find peace of mind. Peace of mind brings joy. And you're not going to find peace of mind except in Christ. Through that Holy Spirit. That's the only place you will find that. Verse 9. But there was a, this is what you want to be real careful of here. There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, the, I'd be a super preacher. My name is Simon. This is the church of Simon. And we do the, and Simon's church is the top notch, you know. Beware of people that name churches after themselves. Kind of, kind of interesting how that works. You know, I always, I, I like the, the way we do. This is Shepherd's Chapel because there's only one shepherd. And he's the head of it. If you want to join this organization, you take it up with the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. If he receives you, you're in. And we're not going to argue with it. But here, you got to watch this one. And naturally, he's kind of, there's kind of a, a hearing, the word Simon, kind of taken off from Peter, Simon Peter. And um, do you know what sorcery is in, in uh, using drugs? Pharmacia. In other words, we get our word pharmacist from this. They use drugs to get on high trips practicing sorcery along with witchcraft, uh, familiar spirits. Those old spirits that were screaming coming out of the others when the oil of our people hit their forehead uh, and they had no place to go but back for death. You know, when a true person of God orders them in the name of Jesus, then uh, they, they, he, he welcomed them. Anything that was special. Simon, he liked them. And I'm going to tell you about this Simon, he is, we're go but even coming out the gate. So the, there was a religion taken up, and it's called Simony, okay, from this, this individual. He felt he was so great that when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected in three days, he had him dig a hole. He said, I am going to do the same, only better. Just put me in there and cover me up. He's still there. <laughs> He's still there. And that should end simony, but unfortunately it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Well, we'll be getting better acquainted with him as we come along here. Next verse, please. Verse 10. To whom they all gave heed. They listened to him. Super preacher was. 
from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. You know, and um, uh, that's to say, they're, they're calling him Messiah. You got it? Verse 11. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries, trickery, drugs, you name it, any trick in the sack, he had it, witchcraft, wisdom, I mean, uh, sorcery, uh, magi, he had it all. Big bag of tricks. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip uh, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. I mean, when, when you got lame people being healed, I mean, Simon, he wasn't doing that. Why? Because Satan can't give life. Satan can't heal. He may make you think you are, but he does not have that power. But this is new, and they're doing it in the name of the true Messiah. 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Do you believe him? I mean, can you be had that easy? You, you think he really was a believer or is he putting on? He's trying to gain new tricks for his bag. Okay. And you got to beware of people that claim to be Christian and indeed are not. I mean, Simon is taken with the miracles. He wants some of the, boy, if he can add this to his bag of tricks, hey, he will really be somebody. Verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. In other words, old Philip's doing so good, let's send two of the uh, big boys down. 15 who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. It hadn't happened yet. You know, just like it had on Pentecost Day, of course. 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, and um, it's very possible the reason the Holy Spirit hasn't fallen upon them is because of Simon. Okay. Waiting here till we get a little strength going. 17. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Just as they had on Pentecost Day. Same Spirit. There's only one Holy Spirit. Got it? 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Now, let me tell you something. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. You can't, when you get these letters from certain beggars telling you, if you'll, if you'll sin so much, you know, the Spirit of God will touch you. They're lying to you. Absolutely lying to you. They're rip-off artists, just like Simon. You know, you cannot buy the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit comes to you only through love and belief and faith, not monies. How crude could you be? How satanic could one get? So I'm saying this especially for people, senior citizens on fixed incomes that are worried about making heaven. Just love the Lord. You've got heaven made. You're heaven bound. Don't ever let some con artist make you think you have to give send so much money that you need for medicine and food to buy your way into heaven. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. It's an insult to Almighty God to even think so. So uh, there you go. That's purely old practice in Simony. And unfortunately, there's nothing old about Simony. It still flourishes in the world today. And uh, so it is. No, they, he offered them money to buy the Holy Spirit. Listen to what they say, verse 19. This is what he was saying to Peter and John. Can you imagine old Simon talking to those two 
with that kind of garbage. 19 saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. Let that happen with me. Verse 20, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. 21, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You can't con God and you can't con a man or a woman of God into thinking you believe when it's obvious you don't. Your actions and your deeds can uh, let one um, discern spiritually where you stand. Verse 22, but what do they say as any Christian should? Repent! Therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. In other words, um, uh, Christianity, the beauty of Christianity is forgiveness. But Simon's got to do it. And of course, we know that Simon didn't. Simon still played the big wheel to the point that he wanted to be buried so he could resurrect and show the world that he was God. He's still down there. That's where all the fakes are. So you want to you, you want to be very careful if you let self fall in the way and then the path of the actual workings of Almighty God through the Holy Spirit. You better always give God the credit where credit's due. For man himself can do very little, but the Word of God, with evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit, is a powerful thing. Powerful thing. You can't buy it with money. And so it is. So next verse, please. Verse 23. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness uh, and in the bond of iniquity. You're just so steeped in sin, there's no way out. Uh, so I hope that forgiveness can come on your part. 24. Then answered Simon and said, now listen carefully, you can learn a great lesson from this. Listen to what this one says. Simon says, pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. Now, now where, where did he go wrong? Said, said to one of them, you pray for me. That won't cut it, friend. That's as bad as Esau in, in the 25th through the 27th chapter of Genesis asking his earthly father to forgive him rather than Almighty God. If you're going to talk to God, you talk to God. He's, he's accessible. That veil over the Holy of Holies is rent from top to bottom. Just walk right on in and talk to him. Don't ask somebody else when you really have a problem, okay? He, what is this a sign of? He knows that they are believers and in good standing with God, and he knows in his own heart that he has this bitterness, this gall. He's asking them to pray for him. That won't cut it. You know... Uh, you can see within that that he is really ashamed even to face God. But most of all, it shows that he's not a believer. He, he knows they have this precious thing. He doesn't understand it. And he wants some of it. So he asked them to see that he gets it. That's just a great lack of faith, all right? I want you to see yourself in this. There are some people that like to pray and say, God, help me do this or that or the other. And you should be saying, God, send the Holy Spirit and I'm a believer and I need help in this. And giving God the credit. Let God be responsible. 
God will hear you. Verse 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of, of the Samaritans. In other words, they took, they took that message up and down that coast and, um, and uh, so it was. 26. And the angel of the Lord, you got that? This is the presence of Almighty God. The angel of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. God's presence spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And here in the, the Gaza Strip he goes. Okay. And uh, Gaza, of course, means fortified, even though it's desert. Verse 27, And he arose and went, he obeyed. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, this is Africa, my friend, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He came for what reason? I mean, here we've got a Gentile, okay? And um, now in the next chapter... In chapter 9, Saul is going to be converted to Paul, and he's going to have a three-way mission, and one of them is to take the word to the Gentile, so the Gentile has an opportunity to believe on Almighty Christ. This is a forerunner, giving this Gentile the opportunity to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28. He was... Um, uh, he was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, that's to say Isaiah the prophet, 29. And then the Spirit, that's to say the Holy Spirit, of course, said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. You know, it's a fantastic thing when God leads you. You know, it takes part of, of faith and then it becomes a reality. But then you know what you're teaching is accurate. You're not playing guessing games. Okay. It's a blessing. Verse 30. And Philip ran thither to him. Boy, he didn't hold back. And heard him read the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? You understand what that uh, prophet's saying? 31. And he said, How can I? except some man should guide me, a teacher, in other words. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, he so opened he not his mouth. This is Christ at the, his trial before Pontius Pilate. 33. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And there he was reading right along in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself? Or of some other man? Was Isaiah talking about himself or of some other man? Of course, he was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the entire earth. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. What was that scripture again? Well, he... Um, he had read 7 and 8 of the 53rd chapter. Let's pick it up, if we may, at the 9th and continue what Philip said to the eunuch, okay? Isaiah 53, verse 9. And he made his grave with the wicked, there was one on each side of him, and with the rich in his death, in his own uncle, rich uncle's uh, tomb, a new one, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth, Ten, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That's the whole purpose, that the truth would prosper. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Have you got any of it? Have you received any of that knowledge? Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's what he accomplished. And he's sharing this with this Gentile, this eunuch, to finish. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. This forgiveness, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. In other words, he makes intercession today sitting at the right hand of God to free people from sin, to forgive your sins, to give you a new start in life. This is what Philip said to that eunuch in completing that teaching when he opened that scroll. 36, as we return to Acts chapter 8, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And if you check this road, as it is written from Caesarea, and you find that stream of water, and I have a work on that. I forget the title of it just offhand. But uh, where he baptized, no doubt the geographical location where he baptized this eunuch, 37. And because there's only one place for water in this desert there. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's what does it. That's, that's, that's true faith. And then that is belief. That is sure and certain knowledge. That is the Son of God, which is to say that the living Word became flesh and walked among us. He, he uh, though being perfect, didn't whimper, didn't open his mouth. His body received the stripes. We get the healing. And intercedes for us against our enemies and sees that we our sins are forgiven and that we have salvation. Verse 38, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. 39, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. And again, uh, when, when you take uh, Azotus, which is none other than Ashdod of today, and, and you will find in Acts chapter 21, verse 9, that the same Philip converted that entire coastline and, and managed to raise a family there at Caesarea, or Caesarea, if you choose. And he had four daughters. And as you will read in that ninth verse of the 21st chapter, they were all prophets. Prophetist, which is to say they all prophesied. Well, they listened to their father and that Holy Spirit so rich in its presence. And I'm sure they were of great assistance to their father as he converted that general area, which today we call the Gaza Strip. And if you ever looked at an area that needed some converting, you got it, the Gaza Strip. And uh, there at Ashdod. So, how fantastic the Word of God and the Acts of the Apostles and the work of Philip still continues on. Verse 40 to complete the chapter. But Philip was found at Azostas, that's to say Ashdod. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So you check it out for yourself. Converting each of them. 
bringing the presence of that Holy Spirit. How close can you walk with God? Phil, uh, this one Philip showed us. And Stephen, one of the seven also, who is now deceased from chapter 7. What a message and a, what a student of God's Word. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse. A summary. You'll never find a summary written better concerning our people than the seventh chapter of Acts. The message delivered by Stephen right in the face of the Kenites. And when the message was finished, he told them, this was the Lord Jesus Christ whom ye have murdered. And that's why they came upon him like a bunch of animals, biting him, gnawing like a serpent, because they were the offspring of the serpent. How precious the word of God. And now we see this eunuch converted. Hey, he believes. He knows that that one was not Isaiah, but that one was the Son of God. And he believed at the hand of Philip's teaching, at the hand of the Holy Spirit. Give credit to Almighty God. So let it be said, it is now opened. And in the next lecture, we will have it totally opened to a three-phase ministry to the kings and queens, to Israel, and to the Gentile. The word of the Lord Jesus Christ. How precious it is. Don't miss it. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment. Won't you please? The mark of the beast on...